Hello everyone, thanks ever so much. Um, I'll start actually by advertising this. I've put some sheets at the, at the front here, which I've said on Twitter are actually by the coffee machine, but they're not. Um, apologies to Richard, they are about mapping sound, which you, I think, earlier on said that you didn't count as maybe mapping or something, but <laughs> here they are. It's an invitation for all of you to create a kind of sonic map. Um, Perhaps in celebration of John Cage's, um, he would have been 100 today. So, um, and if, if you're willing and able to do it, there's an opportunity to kind of um, send them to me and I'll up upload them onto my website, which is advertised on the first slide and the last one as well. So um, I don't know whether some of the, I'm gonna show you a lot of pictures and, and not much writing. I'm gonna try and say as little as possible and let the, the pictures kind of talk really. But um, I'm, I'm really taking neocartography um, into psychogeography, which some of you may be familiar with or not, and I'm sure you can look it up on Wikipedia, probably as I'm speaking. Um, some of the pictures I'll show you, I'm going to call maps, and it doesn't matter whether you do or not, but it's kind of, I don't know, it's for us to decide, I guess, or, or, or not. Okay. Um, and apologies, I'm going to have to keep standing over here to, to change the slides, but uh, my name is Graham Hooper, and I'm Feltham Psychogeographical Association. Um, um, okay, right. Um, I'm going to focus on the difference between, uh, like, like everyone, I guess, uh, old maps and new maps. The old ones are the ones that we know already that we we have bought and we use, and the new ones I'm going to suggest are the ones that don't exist yet, and maybe as we leave here today, we'll start to do uh, making more of. Um, it's a kind of a plea, I guess, as well, and a celebration for for new mapping. But also, as I think Richard said earlier on, a lot of the maps that I'm seeing at the moment are kind of old wine, new bottles. So it's a digital interpretation of the same kind of information, really. And I'm interested in, and this is psychogeography, I guess, in a sentence, um, or one definition of it, the relationship between places and spaces and our feelings and our behavior and how they actually interact. So I'm interested in the idea that maybe how we behave or what we think or feel changes the physicality of a space and vice versa. Um, so lots of pictures, some of them are of my work, maps, um, again it's broader sense that I make and other ones of other people so I'm, I'm hoping you'll see as we go through. So uh, apologies as well for, for reading bits out here which other people haven't done um, and I guess if nothing else at the end of the talk if you go home tonight if nothing else, you'll follow me on Twitter. So here we go. Um, here's our first slide. This was taken by Jessica Wilde, who was 16 when it was taken. She saw the clowns, thought, God, that looks like the UK. So I'll photograph that and it ended up in the Telegraph. Um, old maps are usually formal, objective and sensible, but new maps can be strange, cheeky and, and well, new. Um, this project here um, involved people in Stuttgart being asked to draw on their hands places locally that were of interest. The best coffee house, um, uh, a, a brothel that only they knew about. And they, the hands were then photographed and they were used as tourist maps that were printed and folded up, concertina fashion, and used to navigate the city. Um, old maps get made by people wearing suits uh, or in high-vis jackets and, and they work for organisations in offices. And, and new maps, I'm suggesting, involve ordinary people, um, you and me, um, making them with biros for pleasure or purpose here and now. Um, is this a map? This is, they're going to get a bit more kind of extreme, I guess. Certainly the scale is one-to-one. -one. I understand that maps have scale, projection and symbolization, so you can decide. Um, old maps fold up neatly, fit in your glove compartment, come out on holidays to France with the family, and some even come with waterproof sleeves. Um, new maps are challenging, interactive, and engaging. Uh, David Sparrow is a, a London-based photographer, um, and this project involved him photographing from the same vantage point the garden that belonged to the rented house below over um, a few years. And you can see, looking at the maps, and they're all on his website, how different um, tenants um, felt about gardening. Some of them had kids and weren't really interested in gardening and some of them were really keen on garden, gardens and gardening and got fed up with finding um, bats and balls hidden in the bushes. Um, old maps outline land ownership, land use and landmarks. New maps are sometimes ephemeral, occasionally ambiguous and have been known to have inaccurate scales. Old maps get bought at Halfords uh, sometimes at some expense, sit neatly on the dashboard and have a polite telephone manner that your parents would approve of and you actually find quite sexy if you're honest. 
but new maps <laughs> encourage you to explore strange new worlds, seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where you know the rest of it. You've all seen Star Trek. Uh, here's a photograph that I took, um, which looking back I realized was a map, um, just in photographic form, and it was um, locally to me at the end of the kind of uh, working day, kids would get tires and pallets at a local kind of industrial estate and create a little skate park. Then they carefully organized and arranged where things were gonna go. Um, and it was kind of overlapped onto the, the, the car parking spaces that you can see there. Um, old maps are car centric and, and road focused. I'm sorry, have I gone too far here? Let's see. Yes, I have. Old maps uh, come with a legend and a key. New maps have their own myths and don't need a key because they're not locked up. Old maps have countries and counties, boundaries and borders, but new maps allow for the continuous and the malleable. Some of you may be familiar with the, the work of Martin Parr, um, probably England's best known photographer, and this is an ongoing project that involved photographing the last, the very last parking space. Um, old maps are logical and measured. New maps can be handmade and mind controlled. And for people who have seen this film, Pushing Tin, that um, is about air traffic controllers, you'll be familiar with that little scene where, I can never remember his name, he's in all the rom-coms. Thank you. Um, the map suddenly comes out the screen and becomes three-dimensional and he sees it and he's able to kind of spin it around in his mind. Old maps, here we go, are car-centric and road-focused. They want you to drive to places. New maps begin with human beings walking, feet on the ground. Let's hear it for the pedestrians. Um, I put this up here in case I didn't have time to explain, but if you can imagine that this uh, map of the Titanic to scale is projected in the place where the Titanic would actually have docked had it got to its original destination um, on the centenary of its uh, not arriving there. Um, old maps show us what's already there. New maps make the invisible visible, the lost found, and the unimaginable possible. Um, I've called this chemtrail. Um, that's a whole other thing, isn't it? Old maps have predetermined routes and preferred pathways. New maps relish the contraflow, encourage diversions, and like a good old-fashioned roundabout. Old maps locate windmills and bridleways. New maps don't make flower or ride horses, but can be hot at the top hot at the bottom, rather, and cold at the top, or optimistic in the far distance, whilst being downbeat and even foreboding up close. Oh, uh, apologies, I'll turn my phone off now. It's, it's people tweeting, I'm watching a talk and it's crap. Um, <laughs> uh, they're all, all coming to me. I'll find out later on, so. Uh, um, old maps tell you where you are, new maps invite you to go elsewhere. This was uh, from a project called This Is Not An Atlas, and you can buy the book on Amazon, and someone, a, a pair of, of people here, uh, Nick and Warren, um, started to collect photographs of worlds. And it had to be world, it couldn't be land of leather, it had to be leather world. Um, and this is from Wokingham 2002. There's a whole book of them. Um, old maps might be systematic, methodical, and calculated, but new maps can be intriguing, intuitive, and imaginative. Thank you. Um, old maps are flat and inert, geometric and standardized. New maps can smell of old socks, taste of coal, sound like Tuesdays, and feel like a wet dog, and that's okay. Um, old maps present spaces, data that's determined and demarcated. New maps recognize places which is subjective sensory stories. Old maps plot where people live and where people don't live and the bits in between that are real, actual and known. New maps explore the experiential, the hidden, the remembered, which might have been there all along. Old maps are geographical with grid references and true north, tourist sites and picnic sites. New maps can be psychogeographic sensory, behavioral, 
emotional and subjective. Um, I don't know if you can quite tell what's happened here, but the American photographer uh, went out to places that had been hit by hurricanes and floods and photographed them, and then went back afterwards to photograph them again. And he's put the two side by side. It was a project called Aftermath. Um, I'm going to end here. Um, Google Street View and, and things like Liquid Galaxy, which you might be familiar with as well, feel like, as I said earlier on, more of the same. Um, it tells you how to uh, get to somewhere quicker, the, the fastest route, the shortest route. Um, and you can look at your own house. It has zoomy bits and things. But I'm interested in um, better, not bigger. And I want different, not more. And I guess I'm asking you, perhaps through involving yourself in this sonic map uh, invitation, to explore what it could mean, this, uh, this new map. Um, so get your thinking caps on. Have a look at it. Um, this is the map that Richard, I don't know if you've seen this before, this is a, a map of London's silence using uh, government um, open source data. Uh, the silent areas in London have been, been mapped. So um, if you're willing and able, um, you can go on and look at my website um, and you can certainly create a, a map and email it to me and I'll, I'll upload it for you. Thank you very much. One single question. If someone's got a pressing question, I'd like to pose. Yes. Um, hey, Richard, where's Felfham? Felfham um, is near Bognor Regis. Um, I found it a, a skip with a load of kind of dumped photographs and postcards in, and I realised actually that William Blake, who's kind of a, a, I guess the forefather of psychogeography, had, had lived there for three years before deciding to leave because it was horrible. Um, and yeah, I, I, it's it's led on to me setting up Feltham Psychogeographic Association, and I've promised myself I'll never go there, <laughs> but my tweets explore what it could be like and what it might be like. So.